They have attack animations, and if you can hear them, they have sound animation, and they have the jump animation to come out the window. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another tutorial. In this series, we're going through and recreating Call of Duty Zombies in Unity 3D. Um, this tutorial, we are going to be adding sounds for the enemies and we are going to be adding attack animations as well. So they have attack animations and if you can hear them, they have sound animations and they have the jump animation to come out the window. And when you kill them, if I switch to my silenced weapon, they also make a sound there. So we'll be covering all of that today and this will be the end result of today's tutorial. And if you missed any of the previous videos, we have shown you how to create everything you see here from scratch. So make sure you check those out as well and subscribe for future videos that we release. We release a couple of these a week. So let's jump back to where we started off last time and I will show you how to add all of these features that you see here. All right, so we're back at our scene and the first thing we're gonna wanna do is import the two animations that I provided in the description into your scene. And I have a folder called animations in my asset project hierarchy and you can right click there and import new asset, find the asset there. They will import as attack anims and jump through for the names. And in both of them you want to change the animation type over in the inspector to humanoid. They should be generic when they come in. Change it to humanoid and click apply on both the attack anims and the jump through animation files. And next we are going to create some attack animations from this file. And you see down in the right corner, it's a very long animation file. It's about 40 seconds. There's a bunch going on. Um, we are just gonna choose a couple of the actions here and put them as animations for the enemy. There are two animations right there that I'm going to use. So for our clips, you can change the name to whatever you want. I am going to call it arm attack. We are going to change the length of the clip um, in the toolbar here. Slide the slider until the beginning of the first attack animation we want to use, which is about 1033. And we want to end it 1068. So in the settings, you want to click loop time and you want to click loop pose. This will ensure that when it repeats, it will do it smoothly. Uh, I don't know if you can tell here, but if you take loop pose off, you can see in between, well, it, it matches pretty well, but if it didn't match up where you started and finished, it would be really jerky. So you always want to put loop pose for these little animation clips that we're going to use. If you don't have it already, click root transform rotation and this will ensure that it's not rotating as it's doing its uh, animation each time and click big into pose for root transform position as well and click apply at the bottom and that will create your first clip and we want to create a second clip so in the clips uh, list here click the plus icon and it will give you a another clip that you can use and I'm going to name it arm attack to this one we will do the same thing for a different portion of the clip the start will be 1067 and the end will be 1106 so for this one it's a one-handed attack it's a little different than the first one that we had and then go through the steps again uh, click on loop time and loop pose and bake into pose for root transform rotation and position so now we have two separate animation files for the one animation that we imported and you can make more if you want to go through this clip and add a few more in there but for now we will just use two then move down to jump through animation this one we are going to name jump through and for our start and end so i am going to put the start at 33 and the end at 80 and again loop pose loop time and click those bake transform buttons so now we have our three different animations and we can go into the enemy controller and set up when those animations play so if you click on your zombie asset or your enemy asset and find zombie animation controller if you double click that you should have the animator window come up and so in here we want to add the three different states that we have so we want one state for when the zombie attacks and we want to use both of the animations that we had 
and we're going to make it play randomly so there's some variation in the attacks. So for that we are going to use a blend tree. And I am going to create state by right clicking in the animator and click on from new blend tree. So when you double click on this blend tree it brings you into its own window with just the blend tree. And here is where we are going to tell it to play the two different animations. So in the blend tree inspector, make sure the blend tree type is 1D. Um, there's other types and the type for these, it just gives you more parameters to set different animations for your character. But for this, we're gonna use 1D and we are gonna create a new parameter in our animator. So in the animator window, in the parameter, uh, box click the plus and we are going to add a float and this float we are going to call attack type and for our blend tree we want to tell the parameter to be attack type and now we are going to add motions into the blend tree we are going to click on the plus icon and click add motion field this will give us a new entry for an animation that we can place into that field. So go to your animations in your project folders and insert both of the animations into the motion. So that will be our first um, animation that we add and we need to add one more because we have two animations and add your second. And you can add as many as you want here, the more the better because the variation will make the game just more realistic. You can mess around with that. We're just going to add two here so I can show you the uh, method to do it if you had more animations. But uh, typically I would probably want at least four or five. In the blend tree we have the motion and this field here. We can change the speed but we're going to leave it at one for both. And also you can mirror the attack animation. but Again, we're gonna leave it as the default. And you wanna leave the automate thresholds um, checked. And now that we have this animation, if you go back into the animator window and double click off of the blend tree, um, we can go back to the normal animator window that we had before. And I am gonna name this blend tree um, arm attacks. So now we have our arm attacks animation and when we call this animation we are going to play one of or two of the animations that we put in here so i'm going to tell it when to at use the attack so we're going to make some transitions from our other states and we can attack from the idle state or the walk state obviously we can't attack from the death state because the enemy is dead so we only need idle and walk. So in each of these transitions, we want the condition in the inspector window to be attack. So if the enemy is attacking, then we are going to transition from idle to arm attacks and do the same thing for zombie walk. And if attacking is true, go to arm attacks. And next we want to transition back to any of the other states so I'm going to make three transitions, one to each of the states that we have, and for each of these states I'm going to define what it needs to accomplish this. So in the arm attacks transition to zombie walk, for the idle we can have the transition as it is. We can say exit time and what this does is it just transitions back to idle if the arm attacks is done playing. And for our death forward we want the uh, condition to be death and we have the attack animation set up now so so now we should have four parameters for our animator and they should be speed which is a, a float uh, dead which is a trigger attack which is a trigger and attack type which is a float so if we go back to our script now we want to tell it when to set that attack trigger to true so in our attack function, I'm going to call the animator, which we called anim before, and I'm going to set bool, and we have attack, and that should be true. So in our enemy controller, we want to set the, con the parameter attack to true when we're attacking. So in the function bool attack, we want to call our animator, which we have anim, set bool, attack, and set that to true. So in the attack function it will set the bool to true and we want 
to tell it when to set it to false and I'm going to go up to the update function and in our if statement we have if it's behind a wall or the distance is less than three from the player um, we want to attack if it's not we want to say attack is false and just to make sure that it's always false we're gonna put it in this last else statement so to make the animations that we put in random we need to give it a random number generator and tell it to switch in between our attack type so we made this attack type parameter which was a float and you can see if you slide this slider it goes from 0 to 1 and it will switch in between the arm attack and the arm attack too so there's nothing in unity that will randomize this for us so we're going to do that in a script we're going to randomize this value from 0 to 1 so each time it attacks it's random between the two so back into our script we are going to do this in the attack function and first we're going to check if anim dot get bool which will return the value of whatever uh, bool that you're asking for attack so we're saying if the attack is true so we want to say if it is false then we're going to randomize it because if it's true that means it's in the middle of an attack and we don't need to change the value or else it will get really choppy if it switches in between the two animations um, mid animation so if anim but dot get will attack uh, is not true then we are going to randomize it so here we want to set the attack type which is set float and attack type and for our value we are going to use random dot range and our range we have two different animations so I think it calls for a minimum and a maximum so I'm just gonna put 0 2 so now we have if it is not in an attack uh, animation then set the float to a random number and the next time it attacks it will be a random attack between those two and if you have more than the two attacks just change your random number uh, maximum which is this number right here and this is the minimum so you won't need to change that but now we should have random attacks coming into our um, animation so if we hit play and go into our scene and walk up to our guy he should have an attack animation which we are getting out of the way of but you can see it's random it'll play one of the two pretty consistently and if we stand next to him he will get us and also when they are knocking down the walls you will see them attack so next we are going to add the jump through animation so in the animator let's drag in the jump through animation if you drag it onto the animator scene it will come up as a state and we want to say that the jump through can make a transition to the zombie walk because right when it jumps through the window um, it will start to walk and it will go into this sequence and we want to say that it can go to jump through from any state so I'm going to make a transition from any state to, to jump through and to tell it when to jump through I'm just going to create a parameter and this will be a trigger and I'm going to name it jump through so we have our parameter here jump through and from any state we can tell it to jump through through the conditions field just say jump through and that's all you need and from jump through to zombie walk we can leave it as exit time because it will go into the walk as soon as it's done jumping so go back into the script we're just going to set the trigger there set trigger jump through and make sure the J is capitalized and if we start our scene we should see the enemies jump through when they break down all the boards on the wall so you can see it jumps through. So now let's add some sound to the animation and to the death of the enemy. I provided a bunch of sounds uh, in the description, download those. And the first thing you'll do here is import them into your assets. So I made a folder under the assets called sounds and I imported the zombie sounds. So we have 12 sounds here and you can go through them and listen to them. We want to 
put these into a list and randomize these two. So uh, we'll have six or seven sounds that they will play when they attack, so it won't sound so uh, static. It won't be the same sound over and over. Uh, it will sound more organic if everybody's making a different sound. So let's go back into the scripts and go into the enemy controller again. And we're gonna make two arrays here for the two different sound types. So I put a public audio clip and make sure it's an array with the brackets, attack clips and death clips. So here we'll drag the clips that we want into each field in um, the Unity user interface and we can tell it when to play these sounds down in the script. So I'm going to paste a piece of code real quick here in the attack function that has us play the clip um, for attacking. And what this is, this is the if uh, audio is not playing because we don't want to play a sound if the audio is already going. For this enemy, we want to assign the clip to a random clip. And this is similar to the randomization that we had before, but this is for the sound clips. So here I put the maximum as attack clips dot length minus one and that way we don't have to change this if we add more or subtract sounds from the array so we have our clip and then you just call audio dot play and it will play that audio clip um, and that's all we need for the attack and here we will enter a similar thing that we did before the same audio dot clip equals death clips uh, the same method we use but this time we are not using an if statement to determine if the audio is playing because if it is making a noise we want to cancel that noise we are going to override it with the death clip and play the death clip so that should be all we need in the script if we go back into our scene and you click the enemy you should have uh, two arrays in the script so right now you can see them here attack clips size zero death clip size zero three through six i am going to add to the attack clips and you can't click on them in the project folder or else it will bring that up in the inspector you just have to drag so try not to click them and just drag them so we have attack clips i'm going to put three through six and 10 11 and 12. and then for our death clips i'm going to put seven eight and nine so now that we have that we can go into our scene and the sound should now be working. So I'm gonna switch over to the silence gun so we can hear the noises. But you can hear the sounds now and there's a sound for when the enemy dies. And that's it for this tutorial. If it helped you out, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, we will be posting these videos a couple times a week and we also post videos that we give away free assets for game developers. So you won't want to miss those. And the next time we're going to add rounds and different enemy speeds and things like that. So make sure you subscribe to catch the next video. And thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.